Welcome to Virginia Union University's Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology weekly service of worship and prayer in Coburn Hall inside the Alex Bledsoe James Memorial Chapel. Welcome. Start me on my way. That's why I pray. 
God bless you and welcome to our chapel service today. As we move into the Advent season and the Christmas holidays, I wish you Godspeed. I call your attention to a passage of scripture found in the fifth chapter of the book of Micah in the Old Testament, beginning at verse 2 and ending at verse 4. This is how it reads. But you, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old and ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Thus ends the reading of the word. And with that, I want to talk to you on the subject from a little place, from a little place. Let us pray, Almighty and everlasting God, I thank you again for this opportunity to share a word with those who are of the Virginia Union University family as we come together virtually uh, throughout this semester. Uh, bless this time as well. We've made it through Thanksgiving and now we are in the Advent season and moving towards the Christmas season and the new year. My prayer is that you bless all of your people, bless the university, bless our work, our students, our faculty, staff, and administration. Keep us all in your care during this time. This is my prayer, amen. From a little place. The significance of the season of Advent is recognizing the coming of the Christ into the world. The Christ of God's entrance into the world is perhaps one of the biggest events ever to occur in the universe. Bigger than the Big Bang Theory which purports that since the universe is moving and expanding, this movement was initiated by a primal explosion, a big bang, if you will, which caused random atoms to cluster and create the physical objects we see. And that's as reported from the gospel of Albert Einstein's mathematics, physics, and atomic theories of the origin of the universe. The coming of Christ into the world was a big event, perhaps as big as uh, the creation event in Scripture, when the finger of God stirred into a lifeless, purposeless void, light force and life force. The Spirit moved and God spoke. And when God spoke, things turned into what God was speaking. However, as grand as creation was, the coming of Christ into the world was just as grand. As well, it is as big as other events that are declared in Christian hope. It is as big as the resurrection of the dead, as big as the second coming of Jesus, as big as the great white throne judgment, as big as the end of the world and the reign of the kingdom of God. All huge events in waiting. But none of them could be had not Christ come into the world. 
that Christ was coming into the world was huge. Incarnation was the best word we had to describe it. He was the life force. He was the light of the world. He was the presence of God in the presence of humanity. He was the light of God in the darkness of the world, the landing of grace and mercy on the docks of disgrace and unmercy. He was the forgiveness and love of God docking at the ports of hatred and bitterness. The salvation of God providing an exit from where the door of sin was leading. The Christ of God's coming into the world was big. And with his coming into the world, where then is the stage that is exclusive enough to present him? What city in the world has rallied for him? Who has formed proposals to have him as if he were a Super Bowl or a major concert or an Olympic game or a political convention? Should he premiere on the heels of Hollywood or debut under the lights of Gotham City? Should a torch be carried to an Olympic stadium where a flame is eternally lit? Should he emerge out of the Vatican or some other religious cathedral? Should his coming out press conference take place at some wonder of the world? One would certainly think that the venue of such a coming into the world ought to be at the grandest place in the world. Joy to the world, the Christmas hymn says. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every voice prepare him room. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. The coming of the Christ into the world should have been a great event. It should have come from a significant place. But guess what? It did not. For he came from a little place. In the fifth chapter of the prophet Micah's account, we find a press release on the back pages of prophecy that will be front page news some 700 years later. In the second verse of the fifth chapter of Micah, we find these words. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall he come forth unto me, who is to be ruler of Israel, whose goings forth have been from old and from everlasting. The prophet Micah, called from his rustic home to be a prophetic voice and to make a prophetic announcement, one of the most important prophecies about the birthplace and eternity of the Messiah. He is eternal, yet he has a birthplace. He will come, as Micah says, from a little place. Now, we all know that big things can come from little places. We have seen examples of that in our own lifetimes. We know that significant people, people who change the world, can come forth from little places. Bethlehem, the text says, which means the house of bread, a town in Judah, five miles south of Jerusalem. It's not off the highway, but it overlooks the highway to Hebron and Egypt. Its original name was Ephrata, a city of the tribe of Zebulun, seven miles northwest of Nazareth. The Christ of God will come from there, from this little place. Now, Bethlehem is not Rome, nor is it Corinth, nor is Bethlehem Ephesus or Philippi or Galatia. Even at the point of our text, it was not Babylon or Syria or Persia. These were big, important places, major cities of its day, centers of commerce. But Bethlehem wasn't even a camel's stop. Yet, from this little place, 
will come the Son of God. Bethlehem was so, was so little that the truth of its size uh, is depicted in the title and opening words of the Christmas hymn, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. From this little clan, from this little place will come a ruler. From this little place will come a king, a king who will come forth in the name of the Lord, a ruler who originates in ancient times and eternity, a ruler who will stand firm and shepherd his flock, a ruler who will lead them in the strength of the Lord and in the mighty and majestic works of God, whose greatness will extend to the ends of the earth. The scripture says, but you, you, Bethlehem, Though you be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall he come forth unto me, he who is to be ruler of Israel, whose goings forth have been from old and from everlasting. Now, embedded in this prophetic verse lies a dichotomy, a negative and a positive a failure and a success, a condition of existence versus an unlikely outcome. First, we have an assessment. It's an assessment that negates uh, what we see at Virginia Union, the, the promise of a limitless future. Secondly, we have an outcome that overrides that negation. The negating assessment is this. You are too little. You are too small. Too little to produce anything big. Too little to make a difference. Too small to make a mark in the world. Too little to bring forth anything of substance. Too little to make a contribution that's lasting. You are too little, Bethlehem. Bethlehem, a little town, gets this assessment, gets this negative assessment because of its size and what that infers. You don't have enough resources when you're too little. You don't have enough revenue, not enough reputation. You don't have enough range. You don't have the rapport. You don't have the rating. You don't have the ranking. You don't have the reach or the readiness or the recipe. You don't have the recommendation or the representation. You don't have the registration or regulation, nor do you meet the requirements. You don't have the respect nor the right, not even the rap to produce anything. You are too small. You are too little. That's the negating assessment. And with negating assessment, uh, if failure follows negating assessments. This is the negative assessment. But you cannot allow negative assessments to define your present tense nor dictate your future. If you are a child of God, then a negative assessment is just the starting point of where your success began. It is not a predictor of your future or what it might become. Bethlehem, you are too little. Now, what follows the assessment of negativity is a word that changes the course of the outcome. You are too small yet. You are too small Yet, this word yet takes a detour from the trail of failure 
towards a path of achievement because the assessment shifts from the world's to the Lord's. The world says you are too small, but God says yet out of you shall come forth this Messiah. Doesn't matter what lack you have when you have God on your side. God will make a way. You are too little, the world says, yet out of you something divine will come forth. And the gospel is in the yet. Yet is the good news because it testifies that whatever follows the yet has overcome what was before the yet. You are too little yet. Yet proves that the influence of the outcome was greater than the impact of the assessment in the initial stages of your journey. You are too small, yet out of you will come great things. Yet suggests that there has been a reversal of fortune. Yet tells us that the favor of God overrides our condition of existence. And if we trust God, our outcomes will always be favorable. Bethlehem, the text says, you, you are too little. Yet God said that you will produce the Christ, the Savior of the world, will come from a little place. Yes, great things can come from little places. You are too little, yet out of you will come forth the great work of God. Thank God that God's favor breaks the chains of negative assessments and we will produce in spite of those assessments made of us. It will come forth out of us. And so inasmuch as the Son of God has emerged out from a little place, so too in a valley where lilies grow, where lilies won't grow, will come the lily of the valley. In climates where visibility is obscured by sandstorms will come the bright and morning star. Out from amongst the princes of darkness will come the prince of peace. And out of a culture where fathers are lost will come the everlasting father to be over a conquered people will come a mighty God from the terrible will come the wonderful. For those who need representation, a counselor shall come forth. A man shall become then Emmanuel. In the world and the world's assessments, you didn't have the resources, they say. You didn't have the revenue, the reputation, the range, the rapport, the rating or the ranking, you didn't have the reach or the readiness or the recipe or the recommendation or the representation. You didn't make registration or meet the regulations or the requirements. You didn't have the respect nor the right nor the rap. But if you have the Lord on your side, you have a yet. And yet always means it is to come. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it was with Virginia Union University, a little place. Yet, out of this little place came the first African-American governor in the United States, L. Douglas Wilder. You're too little, they said. But out of Virginia Union came the first president of Nigeria, Namdi Azikiwe. Out of this little place with little resources and readiness and reach or recipe for succeeding yet, out of us come the first 
husband and wife missionary to the Congo, Clinton and Eva Boone. You are too little, Virginia Union. You don't have the recommendation or the representation or the registration or the regulations. Yet, out of you came the first admiral to the United States Navy, Admiral Samuel Gravely. Out of Virginia Union came the first African-American elected to the Virginia House of Delegates since Reconstruction, Dr. William Ferguson Reed. Out of Virginia Union come the first mass arrests or protests in the civil rights movement, the Richmond 34. We are little, yet God has produced out of us people who have changed the world. For we know that God is able to produce big things from little places. You remember in Scripture uh, that you have a whole lot of examples of persons from meager areas, from meager territories, from small places, yet they become something great and make a difference in the world. So it is with Virginia Union University. Out of us came Alfred Creel, the inventor of the ice cream scoop. You are too little. Virginia Union University, you didn't have the respect, the right, the rap to produce anything. Yet out of you came the first black baseball player to enter the American League after Jackie Robinson integrated the National League. His name was Larry Doby. Out of you, Virginia Union, came the first female senator of the Republic of the Bahamas, Doris Smith. Out of you, Virginia Union, the first African American to write a novel in English, Joseph Jeffrey Walters. They said we were a little place, but out of us have come great things. And guess what? You are next. You are the next great outcome here at Virginia Union University. Hope you have a blessed Christmas, a blessed end of the year as we move into the new year, that God will be all around you, protect you, keep you in his care. God bless you.
We hope that you've enjoyed this week's worship services. May the grace and the love and peace of God be with you.